Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Thomas Dimitrovich with the, the IAEI News Live. Today, myself and Mr. Nihad El Sharif are sitting in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and we're going to talk about um, sort of a topic that we did a, a paper on here. Uh, we, well, we're doing a tutorial. Tutorial tomorrow, tomorrow morning, yeah. Yeah. First thing in the morning. And I did, a, I did an IAEI News Live session to talk a little bit about this thing of design and, and struggling, wrestling with the design. Um, conflicting goals? Yes, the conflicting goals. So what we, what we learned in our process was that, A, you've got to have your goals set up. You've got to establish your goals. You've got to understand your prioritization. So, that's the, so, so what, what I didn't do in, the, in, in my last IAEI News Live, I didn't really get into the details to talk about the, um, the layout of our program. So yeah. the first thing we're going to talk about is risk. We're going to establish a discussion around, let me do something. Hmm. Oh, this is better. Yeah. Are you gonna repeat the whole thing or just no. edit it? We're gonna edit no. it out? No, what we did was we fixed the uh, light. The yeah. light. Yeah, that's and, what uh, I was like, this is day and night different. Now I look a little bit blurry. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna put it back on autofocus. All right, there we go. Now we're up. We're in, oh, back in autofocus. Yeah. Okay. So, what we did, so with the way we laid our, the way we laid our program out, is we, <coughs> we sat down and said, let's first establish, what's risk, what risk is, and then what we're going to do with everybody in the audience is help them understand what is their acceptance of risk. What do we call that? Risk acceptance, right? Yeah. We we talk about like you know explaining risk and. Severity and likelihood, and then just establish some sort of survey questions. Because we, the big thing is, and I really like this was Tom's idea, and I fully supported it, that we're going to do an interactive session. It's not going to be a lecture. And right. be, I guess, and, and I feel that the audience would probably be talking as much as Tom and I were going to be talking because they're going to share. Well, a lot if of we things. do, and if we do our job right, the audience will do most of the talking. Yeah. And we're using a tool called Mentimeter. And I know many people at the IEI, different meetings, have experienced the Mentimeter uh, interfa inter interface. But what I like about it is we're going to grab input from the audience. In real time. In real time. And then we are going to A, establish what level of risk our audience is willing to accept, okay. right? So we're asking a series of, I think we got like 14 questions. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, it was 15, yeah, 14, because we deleted one. Yeah, we deleted one because it was, yeah. yeah. It was like 15, yeah, 14, 14. Yeah, so we have 14 questions, <laughs> and we're, and, and, and questions like, you know, would you install a circuit breaker in a residential panel board while it's energized, right? Would you take the cover yeah. of a receptacle off yeah, while yeah. it's energized? Like, are you comfortable with risk? Uh, yeah. Tech yeah. Risk, yeah, taking risks. Doing taking risks. Electric, wor electric work, yeah. yeah. And we even threw in like financials, like uh, your financial planning, or do you take risks with yeah. your financial planning? And if you're willing to pay for uh, seat belts, I guess, one of the questions. Uh, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it's like willing to extra money for seat belts if your car doesn't come with one. Yeah, so we said, so we says, um, if your car doesn't come with a with a seatbelt yeah. or airbag, and I put a number, and I said, would you pay, would you pay a thousand dollars on a vehicle that's right. uh, that's that you're paying thirty five thousand dollars for? Would you pay an extra thousand dollars for seatbelts, or would you pay an extra three grand on that same vehicle for airbags, right? And I and I think that gives you, and again, all of this this is purely made up. This isn't based upon anything other than us trying to figure out how do I ascertain yeah. the level of risk you or we as an individual or this group is willing to accept. So we, we, so the first step in the process is to say, how much risk is this audience willing to accept? Then, then we move and, and, and we break it up a little bit. So we, we go into a discussion of, um, what do you call it? Uh, 
um, uh, I, I think we, we went into some, uh, uh, what, what the hazards. The hierarchy of risk control. Well, we talk about the hazards, yeah. and then we got the hierarchy yeah, of risk, risk control. control. So yeah. we sort of break the interface up. And then we say, okay, now we're going to talk about the goals. Yeah, what are your design goals? Design goals. goals. Yeah. We have eight design goals, and I did change one of those design goals from the meeting last uh, week that I did. Yeah. Performance, we, no, it's security, right? Yeah, we yeah. went from performance, performance security. to security because we had a hard time saying, which which I think is an entirely different discussion because you can have a debate and a, um, a discussion and a debate on what is the, um, what are your goals, right? So we, we picked eight goals and we based that on on some IEEE documents and things, references in the industry. So we have eight, basically, basically eight design goals. And then we have to say, okay, now as a group, we're going to prioritize those. Yeah. So the first step was to establish what level of risk you're willing to accept. Then we distract you a little bit with, you know, what are the, what are the safety uh, electrical hazards? What is the hierarchy of risk control? And then boom, we say, all right, here are your design goals. Now let's rank these. What's most important and what's least important? Right. And then what we're going to do. You know, this is the part that I really like because we're going to establish, okay, this is what the goals of the room as a group, right? Like yeah. it's going to be individually based because the, the Mentimeter, which is nice, it kind of puts a weight. So if we have like 20, 30, 40 people attending yeah. the room, they have different goal orders. The, the outcome would be weighted average of everyone's answers, how many people answered right. participating in the survey, right? And then we're gonna go through what Tom discussed, like all the examples, blah, blah, blah. And then we go back and compare. So this is what you said your goals were. Like this is ranking. what we said the level of risk you're willing to accept. Yeah, and the goals, and this is what you're actually doing in the examples. Yes. And you could see like, just compare, because you know, oftentimes, you know, I may think I'm a very risk averse person, but then I realized after going through this exercise that actually not, I'm taking more risk than I than thought. Than you I was, would think, yeah. Yeah, I would have thought, oh, the other way around. Maybe I thought I was just like a risk taker. And yeah. then I find out through, after going through the exercise, oh, wait a minute, I'm not a risk, I'm not a big risk taker. I thought I was, but I'm not. I'm just, you know. Yeah. So it's like the, it's just perception versus reality, hopefully. Yeah. Because we so, have perception. So, so we're going to establish the level of risk the audience is willing to accept. We're going to go through the goals and prioritize them. Then we're going to go through examples. One of the examples is that first panel board on the secondary yeah. of a transformer. And what we do is we're going to say, we're going to identify the hazard. We're going to say, look, you have higher incident energy, et cetera. We're going to talk about severity. Severity and, and, likelihood, and likelihood of the hazard. Of the hazard. Yeah. So and now we have the discussion of severity and likelihood. Now, in light of all of that discussion, we're going to say these are the solutions that yeah. that you um, and I'm just thinking of. I think I forgot something, but uh, these these are the solutions that are options. What I got to add is I want them to pick which solution would you pick? What pick, what solution do we want yeah. as a group? I got to add that tonight. I got to add that tonight. We're adding a lot. Of I know, He's I know. Like, yeah, it's I know, like, but, but here's the thing. But it's, it's a great but, topic, but, and every time we discuss it, we come up with new ideas. It's yeah, like, yeah. And, so, so, and, and just like in, in, in the real world, we're constantly... But, but here's the thing. Um, so we establish these are the options, and then we're going to let the audience pick which solution they would employ. And then we're going to go, okay, you selected this, and we're going to take each of those options, and we're going to look at at the hazard risk, um, the hierarchy of risk controls, right? We're gonna say, what categories does the, do these design solutions fit in? Then we're going to, then we're going to compare. We're going to say, okay, now we're gonna go through each of the solutions. We're gonna say, these are the hierarchy of risk controls. So this is what the control methods that you're doing. Some yep. of them might be design, et cetera. And then we're gonna say, okay, now let's look at the goals and let's take each of those solutions and say, what impact to each of your goals is it? Is it a negative impact? Is yeah. it a positive impact? And, and Or neutral. Or this neutral. Doesn't, doesn't do anything. That's right, or neutral. And then, and then we're going to, after you do that and they pick the solution they would select, then we're gonna sit down and say, how does that compare to what you said earlier on your prioritization of your goals? 
Because you may have safety, for example, as their top priority, yes. but then the solution that you decide to pick uh, is, is not, yeah. maybe not causing any impact or negatively, adversely uh, right. impacting well, safety. You, you put it this way, you yeah. may have put cost right. in the middle. You may have said, I have safety, efficiency, right. and then cost. But then the select, the option that you picked, the main benefit is cost, is cost is, and, it, and it negatively impacts maybe efficiency. Yeah, or safety, or, or, or yeah, reliability, you know, or scalability of your right, system. And you, right, and you go, wait a second. You just picked a solution yeah. that doesn't line up. It's not consistent up. with, with your, right. your priority. Exactly. Goal. Yeah, and this is what I really like, because it would be like an eye-opener. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I, I thought I'm a safety-conscious person, for example, right. but actually I'm doing cost, or I'm picking cost over safety right. based on the solution yeah. to the problem yeah. or the hazard that we're addressing and yep. we have multiple examples that would like that you mentioned the transformer selective coordination uh gfpe yeah well, well let's yeah. talk about those okay, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna walk, eat, walk through those yes, we can but, do the, it, yeah. but the first thing i gotta do is i gotta fix our light again <laughs> i'm getting dark it's getting dark here getting can't darker. help that can you maybe go all the way that is all the way yeah, okay this all the way so, oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, this now we've, is... we we made a little adjustment in light. So um, so that's the so so okay. So now the first one was the transformer, right? right? Selective coordination is in there too. Now the issue with selective coordination is you're you're employing intentional delays, right? Right. You're employing an intentional delay, and when you employ intentional delays, you increase instant energy. Right. So, so now, but, now. But it's done for a good reason because you don't want to lose big portion of your system. So right. it's not that you're adding intentional delay for no reason, but this goes back to the theme of this whole it's discussion. About, it's about reliability. Com yeah, competing goals, right? We yeah. have goals of, yeah. okay, I don't want to lose too much of my system, but at the same time doing this through selective coordination, now I'm increasing the instant energy in my system. Right. And maybe making my system more reliable because it's selectivity. Like when you selectively coordinate the system, now it's more reliable because you're not going to lose everything if right. there's a fault and let's say feeder downstream. Yeah. But so you yeah. isolate the problem. So as an electrician, I show up on site. If the main has tripped and I know somewhere in this facility there's a problem, I don't know where to begin. OSHA tells me I just can't start turning things on, right? Yeah. So I have to figure out how am I going to ascertain where the problem is and I just can't start turning things on. So selective coordination is great from that. It's great from a reliability perspective. You don't lose power to areas because you have a problem. But the challenge is now, not always will it increase incident energy, but there's a good chance that you will increase in incident energy, especially if you bring a, um, a breaker solution to the, uh, to the table. Well, you're adding intentional delay and we know that and instant energy is current on time. Right. So if the ground fault current is the same and you're delaying your trip time, yes. then you're adding energy. I mean, it's just That's simple right. math, right? That's right. But So we're going to take it's, that it's, and we're going to say now, you have, now there are other ways to increase reliability, right? And we could weigh selective coordination versus alternative uh, power sources uh, versus UPSs, all these things. But we're going to say, suffice it to say, look, I have a code requirement or I have a design objective and this is what my solution is. Now I need to address the hazard I just created. So now I have different ways to achieve that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our discussion of taking all of our, all of those different pieces of the puzzle and say, I'm going to employ zone selective interlocking. I'm going to employ an arc reduction maintenance switch. I'm going to maybe use a fuse solution that I'm not adding that delay and I have fast acting and I am uh, selectively coordinated up to uh, you know, a very high fault current, just maintaining the ratio. All of these different solutions. And then you say, okay, now, which would you pick? And each of those has trade-offs, Yeah. right? So. I, let's and, say and one, one thing that you proposed, which was really nice, the table to bring back all the goals and yeah. get the audience to pick, okay, what do you think this solution, how it would impact safety, cost, right. reliability. Yes. So we get to rank everything at the get-go at the very beginning yep. in general, and yep. then we go back and address or revisit yeah. those goals for right. every example, not just every hazard or every example, it's every solution. Every because solution. Because we have multiple solutions to the same problem, but again, it's a trade-off. You, right. you, you, you pick solution A, 
yes. it would affect maybe adversely affect safety, but it's it's it or, or adversely cost. adversely accept uh, adversely affect cost maintaining yeah, safety right. and maybe positively impacting safety negative on cost negative on efficiency. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for scalability or, or make, scalability. Make it worse. Right. But then you go to question number two, and the picture could be or option the opposite. Two. Or, or yes. yeah, solution. Sorry, not the picture. Solution number two, yeah. and then the, the 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 picture will be completely different. All right, I've got to address. Light one more time. <laughs> yeah. A little bit better. Well, a little bit better. We keep, yeah, well, we keep, we keep, so what I'm doing you is... You need to finish before it gets dark. <laughs> so here's what I'm doing. I'm, I, as it's getting darker, I'm taking my filt ND filter off of my lens and making it brighter. Okay, so... Yeah, that was much brighter. So, here, so here's the thought process. We're going through all of the solutions. And, and so here's the thing. The goal of our session is not to say this is the right solution. We want to encourage the proper behaviors in design engineers who have to weigh the trade-offs. If you don't approach that in an efficient manner or in the correct manner, you make decisions. A, we, we talked about this uh, this morning, remember? Yep, yeah. You make decisions. So I might have my personal goals and objectives. I might say, well, I would do it this way. I'm willing to accept this level of risk. But your customer may, your customer may not, right? Yeah. That's just like in a resident, take a residential dwelling unit. If you went to my house and asked my wife about, uh, if you test Bobby Joe and said, hey, Bobby Joe, do you want me to, you explain a technology and you say what it does, GFCI protection, you're not gonna get electrocuted on these circuits. Do you want these everywhere? She's probably gonna go, yeah. Right? Yeah. She's, not, she's not even going to say, it's like well, a how much is it? Yeah, yeah it's, she's such a it's no her brainer. house. She wants to be safe. And she wants well, everybody she be to yeah. be safe, right? Yeah. And she knows I, I tinker and I, and I do stuff. And she's like, okay, Tom's going to need this because <laughs> he's going to end up killing himself. I either go get insurance on him or I install this protective function, right? Yeah. So, but anyway, I always said if you hit the, um, if you hit the right person in an organization, with the value proposition and they understand it technically. That's the other challenge we have. We are in the electrical industry. What we do, what our electricians and all of our, our experts in the industry, all of our qualified people who do electrical work are on a different plane from a technical knowledge yeah. perspective. And, and it's a business case. Unfortunately, as engineers, not all of us as oh, are yes. good you to know what? present yeah. a business case. Yeah. It's a sales. Like, I mean, you're not selling for money. Right. I guess uh, I remember reading a book back in the day. It talks about like non-selling. I guess he called it non-selling sales, the author, which was simply, I guess the statistics is one every out of nine Americans right. are working in sales. By sales means like you are selling a product or a service. Right. So you're your your description of a job, job job description is a sale. You're selling something, whether right. a service or a product. But the argument was the other seven or eight people, not nine, so another eight eight people are actually in sales business, but they're not aware of it. And uh, the example that you just said, because this is what reminded me, Tom, your example. You want to go, let's say, on a vacation with Bobby Joe. You want to go to Hawaii. Yeah, but maybe yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah. And Tom wants to convince Bobby Joe to agree with him to go to Hawaii. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Tom is selling your the vacation, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and he's not expecting yeah. money from Bobby Joe, but he wants her to agree. So we just go right. like, hey, hey, honey, would you think about this? You're, this you're, everybody's right? a salesman. So yeah. yeah. So and this was the whole thing. We're all selling. You're not. You think yes. Yeah. We're all technical people. That's agree. And it doesn't. But yeah. you're trying to sell even, safety to your manager or your. Yeah, and even doctors of engineer of engineering who work in large corporations are salesmen because they want a research project and they need see, senior management support. Yeah, when you so when, when, when you work with your customer, if you're a consulting yeah. engineer, you are trying to get them to buy in into your design. That's right. This is like you're selling your idea, and like of yeah. course you're getting compensated for your time. But my point is, if the customer doesn't agree with your solution. Yeah. You did not present a good, because obviously I'm assuming that you picked this solution for good, tech, solid technical reasons. That's right. But now the next step is to sell it or to convince the yeah. end user, the customer of the value or the reason that you picked solution A over solution B. 
Yeah. So we're all doing like yeah. a sales job. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, we're selling our tutorial. Now, maybe you guys can join us tomorrow morning. Yeah, Not I too wish, late. Jump I, on well, a plane. Put it this way. Yeah, Jump if on you're plane watching and this <laughs> on IAEI News Live, our tutorial just ended. <laughs> because oh, right, it oh. goes till 12. Right. See, no, I know. Hold on. Hold on. We're east. No. Hold on. It starts at. You start we at ended at 12. Yeah, which will be two o'clock two two Eastern. So this will be playing at 10. So here. this will be playing at 10 o'clock, so we'll which we will be in the middle the of our tutorial. Yeah, so it might be too late to jump on a plane to catch our tutorial. And I think that um, I think that we're losing light to a point where I can't getting, getting darker, compensate yeah. any more than I already have. Yeah. So that's our that's our program that we're doing today, tomorrow, and I think it's a good lesson that 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 we all should think about is what are our goals and objectives. What are our company's goals and objectives? What are our customer goals and objectives? And I don't care if you're a design engineer, you're an installer, a maintainer, you've got to think about your customer. And then if you have a solution that will meet your customer's needs, say in safety, and there's a cost associated with it, you need to convey that message yeah. to make sure that they understand Either, and, and you let them make the decision and the call. I want this and I know I'm gonna pay more. Or I don't want this because I know I'm gonna pay more. And now they're changing their goals yeah. and objectives and their priorities yeah. of their goals and objectives. And I guess, yeah, to me, the, the message, Tom, is get everyone to start thinking about conflicting goals. And it's okay that, you know, they're yeah. always, like, you know, there's no one solution that fits at all. There are always yeah. gonna be conflicts, but we need to work around those conflicts and get the buy-in. Uh, I guess the, you mentioned value, and I'm really big on value proposition. So this part of building a good business case. Right. If you have the value, you show your customer, your end user, your boss, the value of your solution or your proposal, whatever it is, mm -hmm. even like maybe a value to, hey, I want to go attend Tom and Nihad's uh, tutorial for those reasons. Right? So you're building a business case to get approval. So once you show the value and focus on value proposition versus the cost, or the other technical complications, I think it makes the job much easier. Yeah. Just like in sales, because you get people to buy in, yeah. whoever the, this person you're, you're trying to pitch your idea with, and once they get their buy-in, I think cost and all the other complication would be easier to address. I agree. 100%. Because it's just like, you just show people the value of what you're proposing. What's the value proposition? What's in it for me? Versus and trying you gotta to- be in it yeah. to win it. Absolutely. Excellent. I was just trying to fix some of the color, but uh, no, I guess it's just getting dark. But the but the view is is gorgeous. Absolutely, it, it gets really good, and you guys get to see what we uh, where we're spending our week this week. That's right. Like we'll be That's hanging right. out in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, nice nice place. If you haven't been, it's my first time to visit yeah. Tucson, Arizona. Actually, I've never yeah. been to Arizona. It's my first time. All right, everybody. Thank you, and we're gonna so, I, there. I will get ready for the next portion and the next half of this IAEI News Live. So what's going on? Well, I'm glad that you came to visit Tucson. Why am I old? Yeah, well, I'm beautiful weather we're in Allen. Absolutely. Let's do this, one second. Let's put this over here. Since I'm over here, okay. I'm gonna put that right there. There we go. All right, did you see sound levels? Yeah, I can see sound levels. Okay. All yeah. right, it's, it's going good. Finished working on my, uh, my top group that I'm submitting for the IAI public inputs. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we got Rick Hollander, and Rick, you're on the board, right? I'm, or, I'm on the international board. On the international board, you're on from a code panel perspective. You're on code panel. I just got moved to panel eight. This is my fifth cycle on the NEC. Your fifth, fifth, fifth cycle. So, what panel were you on before eight? I did one panel last last cycle on nine, and then yeah. I did three cycles on 18. Oh, okay. 18 is your wiring devices. Panel and nine. There's also signs. And signs. Yeah, that's right. And signs. That, that's where I got on there because oh. while working for the city of Tucson, I became pretty proficient in signs because for the longest time, they said you didn't have to have a listing mark. So somebody had to be able to look at the signs and determine if they were okay. Some sign people had convinced the city officials they didn't need that. Oh, wow. 
after enough time and convincing, I convinced the city they did mean that. Yeah. But I got pretty proficient in signs and understanding the sign codes. And that was a good reason why I got put on 18. 18. Excellent. And I still keep in touch with a few of those people. Sure. You know what that, you know, I've learned is you never leave that stuff, right? No. You just never leave it. No. So then you went to panel nine and that's panel board. That was now not anymore. Yeah. They just changed that. It was panel board, switch boards, switch gear, train boxes. Yes. Yeah. I, I was on the uh, task group for transformers the oh. last cycle. Okay. With Paul Sullivan. Yeah. Paul Sullivan. He's here today too. Okay. Yeah. Paul's here. Uh, we're at the IEEE electrical safety workshop and we're in his backyard and we, and, and he like calls me, you know, what's funny was when your call came up, I, it said Tucson, but I didn't have you. Oh, I got my phone. Uh, all my contacts got all screwed up. Oh my God. So it didn't, your name didn't come up. And I asked the phone, I'm like, uh, hello, this is Tom. And you're like, oh, I'm in the lobby. And I'm like, oh my God. This and you're is, in a meeting. I mean, it's so cool. But yeah, uh, this is my this is my neck of the woods. That's uh, awesome. I remember when I was a kid, this was all desert still. Oh really? Oh yeah. Wow. And now it's a beautiful resort. Town. Yeah. You know, uh, let's just say sixty plus years. I'm the sixty plus. We would admit to my young age. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so then you went to nine. Yes. And then uh, and then now you're on. Well, not nine because it, I can do medium voltage stuff. Yeah. But nine is. Primarily medium voltage. Now it is. Yeah. Yeah, they just switched it to medium voltage. So, so I went to work over at eight. I guess Scott Higgins and I switched. Oh, okay. is that why you went to eight? Yes. Because it because it was more now focused on medium voltage. No. Oh. Nine is focused more. Yeah. On nine is yeah. Nine so is. Focused I moved on over voltage. with the boxes and all. The, yes. A lot of the stuff that we had on nine moved over. Excellent. Yeah, that was a recent change. So they're trying to get panel nine to focus on medium voltage. They moved, um, they moved switch gear, switch boards, and panel boards over to panel ten because okay. I'm on panel ten. So we got that, and I think they're going to move switches. They're separating switches. You have the heavy duty switches, yes, and they're going to move that. I don't know where they're going to move that yet. You know, and they're moving the wiring device switches, like the toggle switches, to panel eighteen. I'm going to say eighteen because we had receptacles. Yep, I was I worked with Chuck Curtin from UL. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah, on our receptacles, um, the last two cycles. Yep. with him, uh, and also with the sign uh, task groups. Um, when I was on eighteen, they asked me to handle one section. We that's one of the first changes to the new way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, and we got together. They gave me six hundred dot six. And I rewrote it with the help based on the wording that we were trying to get because we were getting information. They were thinking that the isolated to the sign That's the wrong time. was going to be a problem. Okay. They submitted the ARIA as an example, which when there's 20 some floors, each floor is 1,700 square feet. Oh, wow. There's probably five panel boards in there. Yeah. But yet, to go to the sign, you open a door and walk in. Oh, wow. So the power coming in is isolated. It goes to a breaker. Then it goes inside the sign. Okay. So it, yeah. met, it met the requirement. But they were also trying to get building codes put into the electrical codes. We don't want that. No. no. Leave that to the building inspector. We don't want to be dealing with accesses, emergency yeah. lighting, all of that stuff. Right, right. So we rewrote that based on 13 inputs. We uh, dismissed five of them, wrote answers to that. Right. Rewrote the section and come back on the comment stage. I had two grammatical changes. That was it. That was it. For wow. only right. I wow. felt pretty good on that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And through that, I, I saw my working with the panel, yeah. and they moved me as a principal to nine. Excellent. Worked good. That cycle yeah. went good. And then I moved to eight. Yeah. I'm now an alternate again, but Tom Moore is the chair. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, Tom, and Tom and, Moore's good. He's walked solid. He's been on that panel. He yeah. was chair, right? Or, he is the chair. He is the chair, yeah. And yeah. it's an interesting group. Um, 
The, the, so what does panel eight cover? Well, the public input was one that I submitted that I feel was was needed. Oh, that um, was your, that's the significant change you're talking about? That's, that's the yeah. significant okay. That was 392.18F. 392.18F. AXA. But see, the style manual says you can't use the word sufficient and adequate. Right. Yet those are part of that article. And that's cable tray. Cable tray. Cable trays, okay. And I've argued that you can't use those. And I used some um, information based on the, the low voltage cabling uh, standards right. to submit and show because years ago, I was inspecting a cable tray yeah. with data wires in it yep. that the Super cool. um, cooling contractor, the AC guys, put the ductwork maybe six inches. You couldn't get into the cable. So you got the you got the cable tray here and you got ductwork right there. Yeah. And you got like maybe six inches. Yeah. My my argument was, you know, a three hundred pound man is gonna be different than a hundred and twenty pound man. Yep. What is access adequate or sufficient to one may not be for oh, the other. Oh, the trays, yeah. Well, in the in the panel meetings, the discussions, one of the gentlemen who works in an industrial facility, now his cable trays are totally different. He's running conductors in his cable trays. Right. And adequate access and sufficient were never a problem right. because they had to make them because of the cable. Sure. So the discussions went back and forth. The understanding from one group yep. to another, because I think that's the great thing about code panels, is you have that broad aspect. Yeah. People from different parts. Different categories. understand. So you get to see all sides. Absolutely. We helped him understand. He helped us understand. We did write some changes. Yeah. We did add things for now industrial applications, a uh, couple other applications. It's not a single paragraph anymore. Yeah. It expanded. But we had to take into account all of these different applications that may be looked at. Right. As an inspector, I don't normally go into an industrial facility. It's all done maintenance and yep. plant, plant work. Yep. I'm glad to see that they're taking the responsibility to follow the NEC. But I'm out looking at commercial projects, such as this hospital that I looked at with the ductwork too close yep. to it. Yep. And so it was understanding the full aspect of the industry that we all work in and working together to create a code that works good for everybody. Absolutely. We'll see this when it comes out. It'll be interesting to see what the comment stages come back. So you got a first revision, right? We got, got a first you revision. Got language, and now when it's published, which I can't remember the date. It should be July something. I yeah, think. July something. And then August something. You know, we have a short period of time yes. for public comments. Yes. And then come August, then we have to have the public comments. So when it hits the streets, we'll see what kind of public comments we get. We'll see. It. And, you know, I think, I think, um, Tom said we had 340 inputs. I think we created 142 first revisions. And I think the panel itself created, I'll say, 14. Okay, wow. Those numbers don't quote me on. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's close. But yeah, that's the kind of work we did in three days. In three days? You only had three days. Wow. I had three days. When I was wow. on nine, we had six, and we finished in five. Yeah. That was, those are eight-hour days. Now- our second day was not an eight-hour day. It was a 12-hour day. Right. But, and when we got to the third day, we were kind of worried, were we going to be able to finish? Yeah. We were able to finish and get done roughly an hour early. Yeah. But that's because the panel worked together. It was a great group of guys. Like I said, it's nice to have everybody's point of view. It broadens the discussion. Some stuff goes through pretty simple. It's It's... You know, real sure. basic, the task groups that did their jobs correctly yeah. make a difference. The task groups, I, I tell you what, I never realized the significance and the importance of that task group work until you see it actually in play. Yes. And you realize 
all that arguing and debating that you did. And then you sit down at the table and someone says, we make this motion. You got language. And now you're fine tuning. Yes. You know, you're not yes. starting to do a screen. Well, and, and the old way, you know, the proof being in part, the proof from this, a partial of this, not, you were going back and forth yeah. doing the same thing over and over yeah. for the same section. Right. There might be seven or eight that you have to look at each one individually. It's just, yeah. With the new process, you can grab them as a group, yeah. look at them, determine what needs to be done. We did a lot of that with the dot sixties, the dot fifty twos, like fifty sixes also. Yeah. There was a lot of commonality between the different wiring methods and we grouped some of that and made group decisions. So that helped. Nice. And um we did the uh the one that I'm sure every panel did, moving to dot two oh, to yeah. listed the dot three to recondition. Oh my gosh, yes. And I'll tell you what, the recondition, I have a problem with the language. Yes, you they, submitted some and didn't get yeah. through. Yeah, well, sure, here's my issue with the install. Yes. So what so the 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 one that made it and it seems to be going through is you cannot install reconditioned equipment, right? But what it doesn't address is I am now permitted to recondition something that's in place. Right here. Yes. And and I'm like, well, I don't know that that's what we wanted. No. You know? So I, so I, I think so, that well, I think the word installed can can confuse people. Yeah. Um now, you know, a lot of stuff coming from foreign countries. We won't talk about overseas. Sure. No, yeah. But no, that's a challenge for their, us. Their, their yeah. options of how they do stuff is different than here. Yep. Their standards over there are different. Absolutely. Working space, wire bending space, everything is different. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is both. Um, always joke that the CE mark, and yeah. I know this is is the guy stood up and says, I swear it are good. That's, yeah, that's a self-declaration. De yes. Yeah. And but, a lot of people have problems with that. A lot. Yeah. I know I, all testing labs, I'm not going to say any in particular, yeah. have really come together to work on yeah. that when they do look at stuff. And I have seen stuff that showed up on jobs yeah. that were unlisted. Um, the most notable for me was years ago, it was a doctor's uh, ambulatory surgery center. Yeah. They brought in these really nice looking tables that you laid on. They were all metal and they operated on. But the listing was German. I wouldn't accept them. Uh -huh. Oh, they were mad at me. Well, they called the manufacturer and said, where'd you get those? Says, we got it from the salesman. Yeah. Well... They have to go through our plant, and we have to do a bunch of stuff to change them. Oh, wow. We had them feel evaluated, and they found out. They found some stray voltage to the frame of the table. Really? So I guess if you die, you just reach down and dumpstart yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a $12,000 difference between each table, and there was yeah. four of them in this place. This doctor's office got four tables for $12,000 less. They were very happy at that oh, point. Absolutely. Knowing that they were safe now. Before, they weren't safe. Yeah. It was a label, yeah. understanding why equipment is listed in label. Yeah. What the and process. That, that is a huge value of the inspector and any third, even as an engineer, as a design engineer, if I come up with a design, I want my peers to review it. Yes. And they criticize it. And they'll tell me, hey, maybe I missed something, you know? So and that's, 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 that's an understanding. Balances are very important. And the, the end goal is safety. Ah, absolutely. Right. Safety. Everybody you know, has the same uh, uh, goal in mind. Electrical safety, us being electrical people, yeah. feel it is the most dangerous. Absolutely, yeah. To me, yeah. it takes no exerted force yeah. under the wrong conditions to kill you dead. Absolutely right. Buildings... You got to build them pretty bad before a force in nature finds the fault. Yeah. Which, look at down, down in Florida, there was a building that collapsed. That is a reality. It does occur. It does. And I, you know what I, and I'll tell you what I look at. When I look at a structure, I mean, you look at the electrical and you see what they've done because you are looking at it through the eyes of a qualified person who understands that electrical infrastructure. And when you're looking at it and you see what they're doing and the, the, 
co- the co- the the corners they're cutting. And then you, then I wonder, what did they do mechanically and structurally? Right? <laughs> we don't understand. Well, I, I, I I'm now a part time building inspector, so I'm oh, looking at excellent. residential buildings, uh, and I understand a lot more about structural and buildings. Sure. Yeah, but. I still feel with my electrical background now yeah. that, you know, there is a higher degree of safety because yeah. of you don't have to do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You can touch something oh, in yeah. the wrong conditions. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to exert a force though. No. no. But that's why we're involved. Uh, that's why we've dedicated ourselves to the electrical industry. I'm grateful for IEI for giving me the education, yeah. the opportunities in this industry totally right. to be where I am. I would tell you. people like you. I would know you. Exactly. If, I, if it wasn't for the IEI. Exactly. That's why, totally right. That's why when I saw you posting that you were in Tucson. Yeah. And Jim <laughs> called me. I said, I'm going to try and get a hold of him. Yeah, that's awesome. It'll be good. So let me ask you a question. All right. Midway. Tell me a little bit about. I spent, served I spent midway. two years on the Midway. Now, when we were panel was meeting in San Diego, yeah, I would usually take a crew with me on ship. I want to go on ship with you. Well, if we go to San Diego, I will take another group. And the docents, the 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 tours expanded greatly since yeah. when I first started going. I would be able to before get into areas that weren't open to the public yet that I yeah. could show my all semi-living style. It's been remodeled a couple times. Oh, the, the, so the, the birthing so, compartments. So, so first of all, the Midway is an aircraft carrier. Yes. So CV-41. CV-41. And when you were in service, when, where, where was that boat? We were home ported out of Yokosuka, Japan. The Ku- oh, in Japan. I lived in Japan for two years on the ship. I actually got a house with some corpsmen on the, okay. co- out on the economy. Yep. That I rented with them. And I only paid rent import when I went to sea. And yep. the nice thing was it wasn't gray and it okay. didn't turn into the wind. The <laughs> okay. All right. That's so fine. what was your job? What did you do? On I was day? actually a mechanic. You were a mechanic? I worked, I worked on diesel equipment, uh, hydraulic jets. The thing that took out my hearing yeah. was the jet turbine starting engines. It was basically a small, they were called gas turbine compressors right it was basically a small jet engine that created the air force to start the airflow to right. start the jets oh, okay and the navy protection back then is not which it. they're paying for now yeah. was not what it is now it was worse than what the earplug thing that everybody heard in the news really yeah but wow. they uh they paid for both my cochlear implants that's how far my hearing loss had got wow, wow. but you're not like um I worked myself up yeah. to a, a better job. I served on the Eisenhower. I commissioned the USS Eisenhower. Okay, so that was so a brand new carry right? for two years. Right. And then you went to the Eisenhower. To the Eisenhower. I commissioned it the day it started. Did you get to hit the champagne bottle on the boat? No. Oh. I was in the parking lot directing cars. <laughs> <laughs> Same as I do on the rodeo for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But so what did you do on the IZ? Same thing. Same thing. But I worked myself into a good position where I became the, the supervisor for all the equipment. Ah, okay. And import, I was in charge of the ship's vehicles, the trucks to go get the movies, gotcha. the trucks to get the equipment, yep. the captain's car. Yeah. And th- those were some interesting times. I'll bet they were. My office was right off of the main deck that the officers came on and off on. Okay. So I got to know a lot of those, those officers and people. Yeah. Now, as a plank owner, which is the people who commission, you are afforded one special thing. When, when the captain comes on and off, they ring the bell yeah. and say the name of the ship or the name of the group that they're with. Right. And when they leave, the same thing happens. As a plank owner, you get that same offering when you leave. No kiss. So it's a, you said a plank owner? Uh, in, the, in the old days of the ships, did they, they make you walk the plank? No. <laughs> it was all metal. But back then, you could get a wooden plank Oh, okay. when it was retired. Ah, uh, okay. Nowadays, no. 
So you retired off of the... I got off this. I did four years there. Four years on the Eisenhower? No, two on the Eisenhower. A year and seven months. Two years on there, plus I had school <laughs> training with the Navy. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But um, in the Eisenhower, was that an aircraft carrier? It was a brand new aircraft carrier. Brand new aircraft carrier. Yeah. Okay. Back then it was. Yeah. A, back then it was the newest one. Ah. Uh, oh wow. No. Uh, I was not back in the of them were, Well, I know the Midway was definitely not they, nuclear. But no. The other one wasn't nuclear either. Okay. Yes. Okay. But um, okay. so. As leaving, since I got to know the people, I decided I was leaving with a title. Yeah. I wasn't just by name, rate, departing. Right, right. I gave myself the title of transportation coordinator. So over the whole ship system, yeah, you everybody hears this. So instead of just hearing a name and a rate, departing, I got to leave name, rate, transportation coordinator, departing. Excellent. I left with title. He left with a title. That's it, all. It was, it was interesting. Um, I was young. I got to see the world. Yeah. I learned a lot. I grew up a lot. Um, awesome. I got out of the service. I was a mechanic for yeah. years, and mechanicing got rough. I bet. I had some friends that, so I'm going to say barroom buddies. Sure. I did not go through an apprenticeship formal training. I did continue to train myself through yeah. IEI and, right. and training that I can get to the point I now teach training too. Yeah. yeah. But um, I had some barroom buddies that were looking for electricians. I had just been let go from two part-time mechanic jobs that was hard to keep. Yeah. So I said, sure. And that's that how was, you got that was training. That was 40 some years ago. 40 some years ago. Wow. And I went from learning to four and a half years. I got my first contractor's license for residential. Yeah. Seven years I had both commercial and residential. Wow. And was in business. Wow. That's awesome. My business I kept open for roughly 18 years. Yeah. And I did inspecting for a little over 19. That's awesome. So, and I'm wow. still involved inspecting now sure. through a part time. So, I'm still inspecting, yeah. you know, and it's an industry, it's, a, it's an opportunity and a career. It's not a job. Yeah, yeah, it's, you're right. A job right. is you go to work at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. You flip yeah. burgers. Yeah. You go to a convenience store. Those are jobs. Yeah, this was a career, career that I could support my family, that educated me. Yeah. That afforded me the opportunities to meet people like you yeah. to network. Yeah, yeah. IEI's networking is amazing. Oh, the absolutely. people you can meet. Absolutely. I, I have always, so many friends through IEI. Well, I always suggest you need to go to a section meeting in your area. Yes. To do this. Yeah. You have it. Those. And so many people, manufacturers, oh. testing labs, engineers. Yeah. Contractors, electricians, inspectors. Yeah. So the, diverse. The diversity, yeah. the conversations, yeah. the meeting of networking of people that will last you for a, a lifetime of your career. Oh, my goodness. I and if you right. have a problem, you have resources. Yes. Cancer. So yeah. you can do it right. And it's, you know what you said, it, it is a friendship that, that, that um, yes. transcends the electrical industry because you are in the thick of things. We can disagree with each other. We can argue. We can. Uh, and we still stay we, friends. <laughs> exactly. It's like it builds that friendship even well, more. That's yeah. why I'm sitting here today because James yeah. Murphy, who is here for the uh, convention, right. called me to let me know he's coming. And we got to talking. So we said, let's meet. And I, I saw you were here. I said, I got to come say hi. Absolutely. But I'm yes. I'm glad you, I, I don't know why I associated you with Phoenix. No. And not Tucson, but I think Phoenix is that. five degrees hotter always. <laughs> I'll, yeah. take a, I'll take 105 in the shade, yes. not 110. Yes. Well, Rick, I really appreciate you taking time. Thank you for, I, for asking me on. Yes. I thank you yeah. for all you do for the industry. Well, and if I it wasn't, like I said, if it wasn't for you guy, we would never have met. And I look forward to seeing you. I, I believe it's in Ontario. Yeah. In July. Oh, that's right. For the, uh, or June. What's the, what's that meeting? That's the, the, the executive board. Executive board. Are you on the, you're on the executive board. Executive board. Yes. yes. Yeah. We will so be I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
All right. All right. Okay. I shut that off. <laughs> <laughs>